Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at Windows 10 build 14971. This build includes a lot of new features, but the big ones include a new EPUB ability to read EPUB on Microsoft Edge, along with lots of EPUB related features to help you read books with ease. Also included in this build is a new Office Hub. We're going to go dive deep into the Office Hub and see what's new and see there's something special about the Office Hub that you might not have expected. Stay tuned. Guys, if you like the video, make sure to hit the like button. To be, to be notified for all future video, click, make sure to subscribe. So this build brings many new features, but one of the biggest features in this build is the native support for reading EPUB books. Native support for unprotected EPUB books. Uh, unprotected EPUB books are those don't, that don't have copyright or DRM protection. Uh, I downloaded an EPUB book uh, to show as an example. I downloaded this book. It's a free ebook. E uh, it's a kid's book from uh, years ago, decades ago, and it's free. So there's no DRM here. So if it's a protected book, you need to use the application it was meant to be read with. But any unprotected EPUB books can be now launched using Microsoft Edge. Uh, Microsoft Edge already supports PDF, and now they have ex expanded uh, support to EPUBs. You could see the Edge logo here. If I change my large icons, you could see uh, there's a book icon with Microsoft Edge logo and a bookmark, extra large icon. There you go, very nice, right? So um, I'm gonna have to go back to details. If I double click it, you'll see Microsoft Edge comes back up quickly. And I could um, uh, click on the book here. I'm gonna hide this magnifies, magnifying glasses, uh, uh, magnifying glass. Um, you could click on a white space in the book to bring the bring up this uh, EPUB controller toolbar, and you have this uh, forward and backward button. You could also use your scroll wheel or swipe left and right with your finger to switch pages. Um, so if I go back to the first page, and you could see um, there's the title of the book. You could select the text as usual. You, you, it has the ability to see pictures and you click on the picture to see a big full-size version of it. Um, you have table of contents. You could click on any item to go, go to that page. Um, let's see what else does it have. So this is, this is the native book but if you open up the uh, EPUB toolbar, uh, the book toolbar you have several options. The first one is to bring up the table of content menu. Clicking this launches the table of content you could quickly quickly jump into a particular section of a book of the book and this button takes you to your bookmarks as you can see I have no bookmarks but if I use this button right here to create a bookmark you'll see this button becomes blue that means this page is bookmarked as I switch pages the, the button is no longer highlighted but if I click this bookmark button you could see that uh, uh, all the bookmarks I have made and there it is I could click it to jump right back so if I have several other bookmarks so I have let's do this page let's bookmark this page I have two different oh, that's the table of contents two different bookmarks uh, this page and this is, it's uh, it's sorted by the date added so this is the latest uh, and shows the percentage of the book I'm through so 88 percent and one percent um, so you want your latest bookmark to be the top because that's the one you last went to. But there's my first bookmark and my second bookmark. There you go. And I could just click the X button to remove it or go to that particular bookmark and click this bookmark button to unbookmark it. And you can see it's gone. There's also a search button. I could search for something. For instance, the. It's searching all instances, showing results. How many results? Showing five, showing uh, the first 500 results. So I think it highlights the word that I typed. There you go. You also have uh, text options. So let's let go. Let's go to this page. You could now change. Uh, we have a dark theme if you want to read in the dark. You could also also have a brown theme uh, for like a book feel. So you have you know a brown background you could also increase the font size great for people like me who have uh, vision impairment you could see text better or you could decrease the font size 
and you could also use a uh, font style you could choose this style I like this font you could use this style <laughs> or how about this I like the second one actually I like this one too no not, not I don't like this one um I, I, I like this one actually classic so there you go this, this one's very nice so uh, comfortable to read so there you go EPUB support built into Microsoft Windows through Microsoft Edge another feature uh, new to this build is um, if you right click on the start menu it used to say a Windows command prompt and Windows command prompt admin if you if, if you left Windows at its default setting um, now Microsoft has made PowerShell the default option um, also, if you open up, uh, because Microsoft believes, and rightfully so, that PowerShell is the future, where the command from prompt is legacy. So if I go to my Documents folder here, and if I shift right click here, uh, the open command window here will actually open up PowerShell. Or it should open up PowerShell. My, according to Microsoft, it should open up PowerShell, but uh, it's actually still opening up command prompt here. Uh, I have proof for you. PowerShell is the now de facto command shell from File Explorer. Uh, it replaces the command prompt win x menu that w we looked in File Explorer's file menu. Okay, that and the context menu that appears when you shift right click. A white space. Um, again, which I did that. Unfortunately, you still see command prompt option here. No PowerShell. So that block isn't completely accurate. But for the file menu, you have open window in PowerShell. So if I go to this page, I seem to can't do that. So let me just go to my, let's go to my C drive. Strange, I, this option is actually disabled. Usually it would say open windows PowerShell and you have the open command prompt, but I only have PowerShell now and it's disabled. So that's very weird. We'll have to see about that. But uh, if you don't like uh, the power PowerShell option here, you could go to the Settings app. Uh, if you right click on the taskbar, go to Settings, Taskbar Properties, and um, turn this off. That says replace Command Prompt with PowerShell in the context menu, or right click the Start button, or press Windows key and X. If I turn this off, you see Command Prompt again, like before. But I'm going to keep it on PowerShell because I prefer PowerShell. All right. The change with this build is that the Paint desktop app has been removed. So if I type in Paint, you see both Paint. You see the new Paint, Paint 3D, and the normal Paint. But if you click it, you only get the new Paint. You can no longer have the original classic Paint unless you download it from the internet. But basically, Microsoft has removed the legacy Paint application. The uh, last updated in Windows 7, but it's gone. So if I, even if I type in uh, Win, Win key R, if I type in, um, let me see. If I type in MS Paint, even the command will open this Paint app. Basically, that original Paint app has been replaced with a small script that just launches this this app, the uh, Universal UWP app. So if I do a, a command prompt, if I do MS Paint, even if I from the command command window, I could just type in MS Paint. I'll just launch this. Can I do this from Bash? Let's try that. Be it Bash. From within bash, ms paint.exe. Yep, I could still launch this paint app from bash. There you go. First introduced in last in the previous build. One feature that has been removed is the uh, is the uh, snooze feature. Uh, in a previous build, we saw that there was a new new feature when you right click on the tab, you had the option to snooze. That would set a reminder to Cortana to look come back to this tab. Microsoft has removed this. According to them, it's due to feedback and usage. Apparently, no one used it. I never used it because I didn't find any use for it. Um, so Microsoft removed it, and I guess they realized no one wants it. I guess so. There you go. Snooze is gone. I don't know how. I don't. I don't think I'll miss it. But maybe if you do, let me know in the comments. Finally, here's the biggest. Uh, another one of the biggest new features I left it for the last is a new Get Office app. If there, you can see the tile here. Get Office, it's beta. This app replaced the or, uh, older um, Universal Windows app, a modern app that came with Windows 10, 
uh, the original shipping version, November update and anniversary update, and Microsoft has replaced this app with the Win32 desktop app. So this is a desktop app, this is no longer a UWP app, so this app will not run on the Xbox phone or Surface app. The reason you could tell it's a desktop app is because you see this um, dotted lines, which is typical in some desktop app that uses web controls. Also, the buttons are desktop class buttons, so are the scroll bar. This is actually using the Office Win32 features. We'll talk more about that. Another reason you could see it's a desktop app is because it has an icon. So the desktop apps have an icon on the right, whereas modern apps, UWP apps, don't. So if I open up um, Movies and TVs, for instance, as you can see, this is a modern app. Movies and TVs don't have an icon. That's true with all modern apps, including Microsoft Edge. But desktop apps do have this icon. And one last way you could see it's a desktop app is if I open Task Manager, and if I go to right-click Office Pub application, go to fi Open File Location, you could see this is a desktop app, Office Hub Win32. It's an EXE file. You could just double-click to launch it. Well, you can't because it's a uh, it's protected uh, under the Windows app. You have to open it from the start menu. But yeah, there you go. This is a desktop app uh, that replaces the old UWP app, but it's more useful. You could launch uh, your application from it. So you could launch Word. Um, you could also launch other apps such as Wonderlist and Sway. Uh, you could wa launch uh, Skype, OneDrive. Pretty, pretty sweet. If an app is not installed, such as if you don't have Office installed, this button will say install. Here's something neat here. So if I, this app adapts to the theme I set in my Office app. So if I close this and go to Word, and if I go to account, and if I switch to a black theme, and I open up the uh, Get Office app, you'll notice that it uses a black theme. Um, there you go. The buttons are there. Um, and if I switch, uh, if I, cl I have to close the app because if you switch, if you switch the theme right away, uh, this app becomes glitchy. So you want to close the app and restart it, and you could see it's a different UI for it. So it'll match your app theme or your office theme. So if I go back to dark dark gray, you'll see this app becomes dark gray um, with a white background. So there you go. There's your settings for the office app there we have it folks um, we took a look at all the new features in this build if you have any questions definitely leave them out not down below uh, if you like the video please like the video and subscribe to be notified for future videos it really helped me out and make sure that you get more content as soon as they're available